this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum against AEW Dark Elevation. This was episode, my God, I can't even remember. Um, 17? 17? Have we gotten there? Uh, we most certainly have. How was the show? Dude, you can give me a show that is between 45 and 50 minutes. Six very good matches. A couple of segments that I thought really elevated what they're trying to do. Buddy, this was the most bang for your buck AEW elevation we have had to date. Really stellar. I'll just tell you right off the jump, it was three check marks all night long. And I'll just explain why that is. Fantastic stuff. I'm telling you, even though this episode was about half the length of the other one last week, which was fine. That was a perfectly good show. This one, though, really got a lot of work done and uh, really highlighted some things, I thought, in a very effective manner. Tony Schiavone welcomes us to another episode of Dark Elevation. And we got Thunder Rosa against Layla Gray, who I got to see perform live not that long ago at the Pro Wrestling Action Show. Um, the match is not very long. This is definitely about them showing Thunder Rosa just brutalizing and running over Layla Gray. Layla Gray, who did take that beating like a champ and at least didn't have to tap out because lately Thunder Rosa has just been hitting people with a variety of submission finishers, never the same one twice in a row and winning. But in this case, uses that fire thunder driver and gets the win. Three check marks. Um, all he go, Ethan Page joins uh, Paul Wright and Shivani on commentary for this one. Because it features Scorpio Sky, who's taking on Marcus Cross of Chris Carrison and Marcus Cross, Master and Machine. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Great to see him. And Scorpio Sky immediately makes the story about that incredible Dragon Ball Z like hair of Marcus Cross doing a great hair mare with it um, and holding on to it and using it and all this kind of stuff. Um, Marcus Cross manages to get in a little bit of offense, but at the end of the day, um, he manages to get him up uh, and then hits him with that TKO. But I did love, <clears throat> as he was throwing him around by the hair, the, uh, the catching sky with a small package roll-up was really phenomenally done. And then Cross getting that drop kick and then a stomp and then covering for two really looked effective as well. So great debut, and hopefully uh, Marcus Cross will be getting more to do. And who knows, he might win Performer of the Night. We shall see. Hikaru Shida against Danny Jordan getting a take on Hikaru Shida in a match where Shida gave her a lot. And um, Danny Jordan was up for the challenge. Two of them went at it. Very good match again. Um, really good. If you're a Danny Jordan fan, this is definitely a match you're going to want to look at because this is the one where she got to do the most and be the most competitive with somebody who is clearly upper tier on the, on the uh, ladder. I'm not saying she hasn't had competitive style matches, but it was usually with other people who tended to do a lot of jobs. Hikaru Shida is most certainly not that. Um, arguably the best person Danny Jordan's ever been in the ring with and uh, definitely looks good doing it. Good job. And then finally that, you know, that boom, that running, spinning knee and uh, Hikaru Shida gets the win. Three check marks. Orange Cassidy with the best friends, including his Goyle, Chris Statlander against Angelico with Jack Evans. And of course, we're setting up this notion that we're going to have a mixed tag match at uh, Dynamite on Wednesday, which I'm going to be at in Miami, Bobby. Cassidy... Hands his sunglasses to the referee, but Angelico takes his sunglasses, puts them on and dances. Um, they, some really great physical stuff here. Um, the two of them twisting each other up, um, attempting to put holds on each other, attempting to land finishers on each other. A very different kind of match than you're used to seeing at uh, AEW or especially WWE. But generally, you don't see this kind of match very often. So it's fascinating. And at the end of the day, um, 
uh, when Orange Cassidy ca catches him in the mouse trap, which we haven't seen him do for quite a while, it's really, really, really good match. Because I would call this a competitive match, um, I'm going to give it three check marks as well, but for different reasons. Did they both look good? Yes. Um, do they get a second check mark because uh, Orange Cassidy looks really good in the win? Yes. And do they get a third check mark because something is advanced? Yes, because there's this idea of the Hardy family office of which Angelico and Jack Evans are tentatively members of, or at least mercenaries for. Um, so them trying to weaken Orange Cassidy before his mixed tag match against Bunny and the Blade of the Hardy family office. So three check marks there. Great stuff. <coughs> Angelico tries to attack Cassidy after the match. <coughs> but Cassidy finally hits his orange punch, so they're even making sure Orange Cassidy kind of sends them home happy by showing his finisher, even if he doesn't use it in the match. Smart, that's what you do with stars. Uh, Taylor helps deal with Evans. Uh, the Blade and the Bunny enter the ring to confront Cassidy and Statlander in anticipation for the Road Rangers. See what I mean about setting that up? Serena Deeb against Tesha Price. Boy! Um... Deeb shows off her new thing, robe that has Woman of a Thousand Holds on it. Price says she's a fan and wants a handshake. Deeb slaps Price in the face. And then, uh, boy, Deeb is just goading her on. Come at me. They're really laying into each other. It looks good. She pulls Price out of her kind of silly thing, which I get that she's trying to do a thing. But I like that Deeb's thing was like, no, I want to fight. I want a challenge out of this and gets it. Um, Price looks good for a little while, but at the end of the day, gets her in the serenity lock for the win. Three check marks. Um, Alex Marvez is with Joey Janela. Asks Janela about his help. He doesn't say anything. He asks about him being late to save Sunny Kiss on last week's dark. Janela takes off his sunglasses. Marvez says they were at a different place. Uh, Marvez asks Janela about his appearance on Tomorrow's Dark with Sunny Kiss on the waiting room. Mm. With Britt Baker. So they're going to bring back that Britt Baker waiting room. I was just thinking about that, how much I would like to see that happen again. And here we are. Janela takes the mic. The crowd chants, we want Sunny. Janela says, I'm just frustrated as he walks away. Okay, so... We have a reason to tune into Dark. That's probably a smart thing to do, eh? Serpentico with Luther against Dante Martin. A very good match. A very good outing for Serpentico, who really gets to show his stuff here. Of course, Dante Martin, at the end of the day, um, hits a flipping DDT and wins. But more importantly, um, really, Dante Martin looks good here. Um... Luther attacks Martin and uses Serpentico to attack Martin as well after the match, but Matt Seidel's music plays, and Seidel comes in and causes Chaos Project to run away. So we've kind of setting up a possible tag thing happening in the near future. So a good, solid episode of AEW Dark Elevation. I liked it. And congratulations, Marcus Cross and Danny Jordan, both really good outings this week.